gamers i am back from a surgery now if you're watching on youtube you probably didn't miss anything or didn't notice anything but i've been gone for five days on twitch there's my knee these are the freshest bandages or whatever the fuck they're called from uh yesterday so yeah for those that don't know i'll give you a bit of a backstory last year i tore my meniscus broke my meniscus i don't know what the proper wording on it is uh and basically what happened was um i wish i had some kind of like serious injury and then my knee was busted but it was actually the stupidest injury ever and this was my first like major injury or major for me at least major hospital visit i never had a surgery i never broke a bone i never went to stay hospital for you know longer than an hour knock on wood basically what happened is last january some of you may know may not i we were marika and i were in arcades and we played ddr and um like i did level one she did level three uh i did level four she did level five and i was like fuck it i'm gonna go max level i'm gonna go level seven and it was going well uh and then there's a part where you have to like bend down like kind of go down so like i don't know you will go under something whatever and as I went down, my right leg, like, you know, this, this is my legs, my right leg slipped to the side and I heard a pop and my instinct was immediately to get up because it was a very like loud pop and I got up and my knee popped like four more times and I was like, oh, what the fuck? And I was like, something's wrong. And as you do, I finished the level. Uh, I was like 60% into it. So I basically tore my meniscus or broke my meniscus again. What's the proper wording? Uh, and then I finished the level <laughs> with my busted leg and, uh, and and I got off the, the DDR and I told Mareka, I think I broke my knee. Like, and she's like, you didn't break it. You wouldn't be able to walk. And I was like, okay, well, something's broken. broken. It, my knee does not feel good. There was some pain but it wasn't like you know instant insane pain but i felt like my knee is like like loose like this like it's not properly attached so i went to the doctor they told me it's too early to like it's most likely a strain uh, a week later i went again and i did a scan and um, uh they so the radiologist looked at it and said oh there's some like uh, fluid in your uh, knee but it's nothing serious and i obviously did not trust that because i have had you know strains i've had muscle pain I've, I've had the light injuries this was not it like this felt weird it was very uncomfortable and it was again i felt my knee is not attached so i went to uh i didn't listen to the radiologist obviously uh, i went to like a knee joint specialist and they uh this was like two weeks or three weeks after that because i was like oh maybe maybe it's nothing kind of thing so two three weeks after that which is about a month after injury i go to the specialist and i send them the the, the mri and they tell me that um i have like a, a small cyst my meniscus is torn uh, my uh cartilage i think like oh, above the knee on the knee i don't know where it is is like weakened and they literally because every time i went to the doctor i told them that i don't feel my leg is attached like I, I was like i don't know how else to explain but i feel like my knee is not attached to the rest of my leg it's not attached properly so it turns out it was not attached properly and that's why i had trouble walking on that leg that's why i had pain and all that so they suggest physical therapy and uh they said we can also do the injections but let's try with physical therapy first to strengthen the leg and all that because the, the tear was not that big. Uh, well, I did physical therapy for about three months and I continued doing exercises at home, but every, and, and my leg was fine. But every once in a while, like I couldn't run, but every once in a while I would like get out the bed and I would just hear that pop, you know? There's like an angle where if I bend my leg, it just pop. And the moment that happens, there's no pain, but I know for like two weeks after I'm gonna be in, in crazy pain. So, this goes on for a while and it's kind of not it's it's like painful but i've kind of learned how to live live with it kind of thing and i was like i see ba going to doctor again and about three weeks ago that pop happens again except the pain was insane like i would get to 
I would go to, to bed at night and I had trouble walking up and down the stairs. And it's to the point where I went to bed at night and my leg was just in so much pain I couldn't fall asleep. So I decided to finally go to the doctor again and they do a, like an ultrasound. He does an ultrasound on my knee and within like three seconds he's like, this, this needs surgery. Uh, so he, the, the doctor told, the surgeon told me, he said my, my son also injured his meniscus and he has a small cyst. And your cyst is six times the size of his. And he's like, and his is almost for surgery kind of thing. And I was like, okay. And he, he said, we can also do injections, but there's a chance it, it won't work. And I was like, just, I want surgery. So basically um, on Wednesday, I don't know when this video is going to come out on YouTube, but on Wednesday 2nd, I think it was 2nd. Or actually Tuesday, I went to the hospital and to talk to like anesthesiologist and to just like for them to take my blood to make sure everything is fine you know pre-surgery everything was fine i talked to an anesthesiologist and i couldn't decide which anesthesia do i want do i want the uh, the general one that like knocks you out completely or do i want the local one which is just injecting the um anesthetic into your leg so I had no fucking clue, and then I asked people who had issues, I asked people who had uh, meniscus surgeries, I asked doctor friends that I have, and I basically got a 50-50 answer. Uh, which did not help, actually, it made it even worse. Like, if one side was like, yeah, you should go for that, you know, majority, I'd be like, okay, fuck it, I'll go for that. But it was literally 50-50. So, on Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., I had to go for surgery, so it was scheduled within, like, four days. Of me going to the doctor <clears throat> I could have scheduled it earlier but I went I think on like Thursday and I and I asked for surgery on on Wednesday but I could have gone earlier but I was like I need a little bit of time you know <clears throat> so Wednesday morning I went at 8 a.m. and they were like we need to you know uh, find your vein in your you know hand for the you know medicine after and whatever and I was like okay so they do that and it stings a little bit and I feel a bit calmer because I was very nervous the night before. I didn't sleep a lot. Uh, you know, I never had surgery. I never stayed in the hospital. And, you know, I really hate doing things that I'm not familiar with. Uh, you know, the nurses were coming over. <clears throat> they were checking my blood pressure. They were checking, you know, my, you know, all the vital signs and all that shit to make sure everything is fine. My blood results were fine. So I was kind of ready to kind of get into it. So then the anesthesiologist came in and he said, did you decide when is the easy one? And I was like, I have no idea. Like, and he's like, okay, you know, you, you need to decide because you need to pick. We can't pick for you. And we talked for a bit and he's like, he's like, your surgery starts in about 45 minutes. So you need to kind of decide. So then another anesthesiologist came in and he was a, a younger guy, uh, probably my age, maybe, maybe a bit older. And he was like, hey, I heard you're having issues like picking um, uh, the anesthesia. Like, what are your concerns? What's the problem? So I tell him, like, the general anesthesia, uh, obviously, there's a lot more risk with it. It's It kind of knocks you out for a longer time. Uh, the recovery period is apparently longer. And, um, you yeah, know, that's kind of my, my problem with it, I guess. Concern, whatever. And then he's like, what's the... What about local? He's like, you won't have any pain. And I was like, I'm not worried about pain with local anesthesia. I'm like, I'm worried that you're gonna give me anesthesia. I will feel no pain. And then I'm gonna hear fucking drilling and I'm gonna see blood and shit, you know? And I'm more worried about sounds. Like, I don't know what they're gonna do to my knee. Like, I don't know if there's gonna be drilling or whatever. And I was like, that's the part that's kinda, that I'm kinda, you know, so he told me we can give you like sedatives to calm you down. And I was like, do they put me to sleep? He said sometimes, but most of the time it will, <clears throat> you will be awake, but you will, you will not really understand what's happening. Like you're going to be there and you can respond, but you're not, your brain will not process what's happening. And I was like, fuck, oh my God. I was like, okay, I'll do local. He's like, are you sure? I was like, let's do local. So. Um, later on, they come to, you know, get me. They're like, change into this gown or the nurse comes and she's like, you need to change into this. And I was like, okay. So, um, 
she's like, you need to take off your clothes. And I was like, all of it? She's like, yeah. And she's just, she's just, you know, standing there. And obviously I'm, I'm uncomfortable because for them it's just another day, you know, but I'm like, my dick's about to be out kind of thing. Obviously she's not like staring at my dick, but it's just like, it's a weird situation. It's like, I just went from laying in bed and then it's like, okay, it's, it's go time. And I was just like, I don't know, the whole experience was just, it wasn't scary, it was just like surreal in a way. Because I never had surgery, so it was kind of weird that I'm in that situation, right? So I take like everything off, she puts the thing on me, she ties it behind the back, she's like, okay, we're gonna go to the uh, floor above. And I'm like, okay. Um, I don't have any sedatives in me or anything, no anesthesia. So I go upstairs, and I'm like, do I leave my glasses? She's like, yeah, you can leave your glasses. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm a bit blind, so, you know. She's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll take you. So she was kind of like holding my arm because she thought I'm super blind. I wasn't that blind. Um, we get up and we're entering this room. And as we enter, it looks like... The best way to describe it, you know, like in the movies when there's like an alien ship and there's just like a table in the middle and there's just all these machines around it. And I was like, oh, like, th this is real, you know, it suddenly got very, very real, right? So she's like, you need to lie on the on the table. And there's two surgeons, there's an anesthesiologist, and there's two nurses. So she's like, hold on, I need to, like, unwrap this. Because they tied behind the back, the, the gown or whatever. So I was like, okay. So she's like, hold on, I need to untie it. I'm like, okay. So I get up. The moment I lay down, they take the gown, because the gown is the one you, you put your arms through and then they tie it in the back, right? So then they start taking it off and I'm naked, right? The only thing that's covering is my dick, right? So I'm on the table and like one nurse is like, give me your arm. So I put my arm like flat, the other one like this. The one is doing the, uh, like putting some shit on me, checking my blood pressure, the other one is like connecting um, the thing to my arm, like connecting some fluid, I don't know what the fuck. And she's like, I'll do, we'll do some, uh, I don't know if they did sailing then or before, I can't remember. So I'm just like, bro, I'm out there, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh God, like it's starting. Like I, I was thinking like, what if I panic? Like, again, I had no experience. So I'm like, what if I hear everything? Like there's a million things going through my head, but everything is happening so fast. Like the doctor is asking the other doctor stuff, and anesthesiologist is getting his stuff, like and hear the drawers being open. But this is like 30 seconds in as I'm on the desk, on the table. I keep saying the desk, on the table. And then my gown moves to the side and my cock gets exposed. And I was like, oh my God. but my arms are like this. You know what I mean? So it's, I can't. I, it's not like I can put back the gown and I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. And my cock's just out there. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, it's fine. Like they see cocks all the time. Like they do surgeries all the time. They don't care. So I actually didn't care. But my initial thought was like, wait, my cock's exposed. Because I felt like a gust of wind, you know, on my nuts. So... So I was like, oh god, it's so uncomfortable. But I was like, they see it all the time. Like, who, who gives a fuck? I'm about to be fucking cut into. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the table. So I'm just like looking up and I'm just like, fuck you know. So at that point, they, um, they say, okay, we're going to do anesthesia now. But this is happening all, like from the moment I enter to the moment of anesthesia is like two minutes, right? Tops. God, the anesthesia part was rough. So apparently, I, I don't know, I might get some medical stuff wrong, by the way. So if I say something wrong, it's not that the doctors don't know. I probably like misheard, misunderstood, whatever. So apparently there's like three nerves right here, like just above the thigh, I think. And apparently they're calling them three in one because one nerve, from what I understood, is for thigh. One is for knee or under the knee and one is for foot. So basically, if you press on that nerve, your foot does this, right? So they're like, okay, we're gonna start the anesthesia. And the, the anesthesiologist tells me that, and he says, we need to find the nerve for your foot. And I'm like, okay. So they inject me and I'm like, holy fuck, it's one of those injections that hurt. So he injects me 
and my thigh is like doing this like it's it's super like just going all all you know everywhere and they're like uh do you feel something in your foot i'm like no it's in my thigh but i'm like no it's my thigh and he's like you need to remain calm like you need to stay calm and i'm trying to remain calm and i'm kind of on the side like uh, i'm on my side of my left leg and my right leg is over it so that my this part is like super exposed right so they go in again and I start feeling like shaking in my knee and they're like do you feel anything in my in your foot I'm like no I don't and then they go back in and they hit the fucking thigh one again and I was like I was like no thigh again and I was like okay and the fourth one they go and it hits the like my foot was just like like this I wish I was joking and I was like that's that's the foot that's the foot and it's like okay good so they inject and I can almost immediately start feeling the anesthesia like I can feel the numbness kind of going down my leg I was like thank fuck so he's like okay lie back down and then um, anesthesiologist goes around and maybe 30 seconds later he said okay now I'm gonna give you the sedative so you calm down a bit and I said okay and I don't remember anything and I just remember hearing like almost like a whisper like Ale Alexandre which is you know, my name Alexander like we're done with the surgery and I was like I remember the first thing I thought was like I was like wait when did I get knocked out like when did I when did I fall asleep that's the first thing I thought and I was like obviously dazed and they're like we're gonna take you to your room now and I was like okay so they took me to the room and you know the the anesthesiologist came in and he, he I don't know what he was fucking saying but he was probably saying something or I think he said something along the lines of like you're gonna be feel feel dizzy for a bit the surgery was fine I'll come later to talk to you you just need to rest so then I take my phone I send selfie to my mom and and Mareka like I'm like I'm just fucking you know still sedated kind of thing that I don't even remember sending then someone else sent me a message and I responded and I don't even remember that so yeah I the sedatives are supposed to supposed to put you in this state where you don't really remember kind of thing but they completely knocked me out although I might have been awake I just don't remember it so I remember looking at the time and the time was 12 20 and I was very confused because I was like I was like, wait, the surgery was supposed to be 30 minutes. And basically this, my surgery was scheduled for 10. So it was supposed to be done at 10.30, 10.45, let's say. My surgery was over one and a half hour, close to two hours. It was 12.20 when I looked at my phone, but it took a bit for me to like gain, you know, brain activity. So basically I'm on the meds and the nurses from then on are constantly you know, I tell Mareka, they called Mareka, but I told Mareka I'm done and you can you can come visit immediately. And then, you know, I messaged my mom to, so she knows that I'm fine. And from then on out, it was just like constant fluids. Like I was getting like, I think it was saline, then fucking IV, then I was getting antibiotics, and then I was getting probiotics. And I was just like, it felt like almost constantly on some kind of drip, but it was let's say i got those 10 10 12 bags in one day 24 hours i basically didn't eat for like 24 hours because they're giving you iv so you're not really hungry um and i was peeing like a fucking racehorse they give you like this thing again i don't know how much experience you guys had but they give you uh this thing they don't do like catheter right but they give you like a, this in Serbia it's called goose um it's just like a bottle thing and you just pee in it and uh, I was just fucking peeing all the time, man. Because they, they give you so many fluids, it's insane. And then I looked at my leg and it's like, it has, uh, what is it called? Ionide? Iodine? Yeah, so my whole leg was like orange, right? Oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you, I had to shave my leg like uh, before the surgery. I forgot that part. That was before the surgery. So yeah, my whole leg was like fucking orange, like, like Trump. So I was looking at my leg and I was like touching it, you know, because it's a weird feeling. It's a bit like bigger, right? I'm laying in bed and I'm just like, 
I'm, st I'm not in pain, still anesthesia is still doing work. And I actually, uh, I didn't ask for any pain meds until like 11, 11.30 in the evening. Uh, I was just fine. I felt some discomfort earlier in the day, but it wasn't that bad. But holy fuck, it was boring, man. Like, I had my phone there and I watched TV shows, but it was so boring. And this is the worst part. I don't sleep on my back. I sleep on the side or on my stomach. And because my knee, I had knee surgery, I can only sleep on my back. And uh, I can't get proper sleep at all for the past six days. Even when I get sleep, it's just like I wake up and I just want to roll over. But I can't. So the stay in the hospital was really boring. Like, obviously I had visitations and I watched Netflix and stuff like that. But I was like, more than anything, I just wanted to be on my side, you know. And then I would fall asleep. I would sleep like an hour and I would wake up. And then I woke up at 3 a.m. and I stayed up till 6 a.m. It was just like very irregular kind of sleeping. Uh, they brought me, uh, Reika and my mom brought me some food because I have celiac disease. So, you know, I don't want to risk getting fucking gluten while I'm in hospital. Um, and then they told me I need to stay two nights. And I was like, huh? I was like, I, I, I don't want that. I want to go home. So I stayed one night. And basically the reason for that is. So the reason why my surgery took longer, by the way. And this is how I'm sitting on computer all the time. I have two chairs and I'm, I'm just like laying down basically in a sitting position. Basically what happened is I had a big cyst that needed to be removed. Which they did remove. And then they knew that my meniscus was, you know, torn. But apparently the injury was way bigger at that point uh, than they thought it would be. And we didn't do another MRI because I already have an MRI confirming that I have torn meniscus. So there's no point to do another one. They were kind of like, once we operate, we'll see, right? So apparently the meniscus was in a lot worse state. So that's why the surgery took longer. But they said they fixed it. It's all good, whatever. The anesthesiologist was like, yeah, it, my suggestion is for you to stay another day just to make sure everything is fine. And I was like, I don't want to fucking do that. You know, just thinking like, bro, I, I can't do another 24 hours. Like, I'm, it's so boring. So basically in the evening of the surgery around 12, I was bored, uh, 11, 12. And I was like, for some reason, I just didn't ask at all. I didn't ask the doctors if I can, if I should try standing up, if I should try moving my leg or bending my leg. I'm like, I don't know, right? So I get out of bed and I, and I, I barely managed to get out of bed because you have these bandages that are like super tight, like post up, super tight. So I can't really bend my leg. And every time I try to bend my leg, I get like sharp pain in my leg. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or not. But I remember them telling me that I should try to be active as soon as possible without having extreme pain. So I kind of sat down and I stood up and, and I kind of stood on my left leg. And I was like, oh my God, thank fuck I'm like not laying down anymore. Because, you know, I've been laying down for like 13, 14 hours. So, yeah, I stood up for like two minutes and I was like, okay, I should go back down. Getting my leg back in the bed was fucking painful. And I was like, okay, I should not have done that. And that's when I asked for pain meds because I basically activated my leg and it was fucking hurting like a bitch. So in the morning, uh, the doctors arrived and I asked like, by the way, they asked me, did you walk? Did you try walking? And I was like, no, because I forgot to ask if I should. And um, and they're like, yeah, you, you should try as fast as possible. You don't want your leg to, I don't know what the English word is. You know, but you, you want to try to activate as fast as possible, obviously not to be in, in pain or anything else. And I was like, okay. And they, they said they're going to bring me the, the walker, the, the thing you like press on and then you kind of move it and, you know, it helps you walk a bit. I'm like, okay. So I tell them like, I, I don't want to stay another day. I want to go home. Uh, and you know, I kind of gave the excuse of like, I have celiac disease and I kind of want to eat food at home. So I was like, you know, and... And I said, like, my wife broke, like, had surgery four times, so she can also help me with something if needed. Um, I'm not in pain. And I was like, I took pain, pain meds very late last night. And 
before I saw the surgeon, I actually did try to uh, walk and I did walk for about three, four minutes, not fully leaning onto my leg, but I did walk a bit. And I told him like, I already did some walking and you know, it's a bit fain painful and I can't do like, uh, I can't stand on my leg, but you know, I feel better compared to atrophy. Yeah. And uh, you know, I can't stand fully on it, but you know, I moved a little bit and I did walk around the room. Like I said, it was probably like two, three, four minutes. It was very hard. Because your leg basically fucking hurts like shit. So he's like, okay, I'll I'll have a discussion with the other surgeons and, and you know colleagues, whatever, and then we'll tell you a bit later on. So at around 1 p.m. day two, uh, the director of the hospital came in, who's also a surgeon, but he didn't do the surgery. And he asked me, How are you feeling? and yada yada. And um you know, I told him this and that, and he's like, did you walk already? I said, yeah, and, you know, it's painful. I tell him the same thing. And he said, uh, he said, okay, listen, you can go home today, but let's wait a couple of more hours just to make sure there's no issues. You're gonna get another IV. You're gonna get another whatever the fuck. We'll do another round of the meds you're supposed to take, and then you can go home. And he asked, can somebody pick you up? And I said, yeah. So, I was like, fuck yeah. So I sent a message to Marek. I was like, yo, I can leave today. Because they were pretty determined that I have to stay. I was like, let's fucking go, baby. So I was kind of like mood increased. Because I was already getting that, that fucking hospital, you know, depression. I don't know what's it called. Like, I, I just felt it. Like, my mood was getting heavily affected. It just fucking boring. I don't, I don't know. If you stayed in the hospital, you know what I mean. And uh, I was like, I was like fucking excited. I was like, okay, let's watch another Netflix or two. And uh, then the time came, Marika picked me up and she uh, brought me crutches. And dude, it was hard walking. I'm not gonna lie. It was painful. Um, like it was a struggle. Like I, my arms had to do so much work because it's basically trying to walk without using your legs and you're pushing your whole body weight onto the crutches. And I was like walking and I, maybe I walk like, you know, to, to go to the, from my room to the elevator downstairs and in front of the hospital. Let's say it's 50 meters. I was so tired. Like I, I was actually exhausted from it. <laughs> then we called taxi. <laughs> I was like, how do I fit in the taxi? Because my leg has to be straight. I cannot bend it, right? So we try to go in the front seat and to put the front seat all the way in the, like push it backwards. My leg does not fit. And I'm in so much pain because not only I just fucking walked 50 meters, you know, that I haven't walked more than two minutes before that. So now I have to get out and I'm trying to get out and Rick is holding my leg slowly repositioning but any kind of tilting of the leg is just like sharp pain. So I'm like, I'm gonna go in the back and I'll just lie down. So I go in the back and the taxi driver is very nice. He's like, do you want me to help you? Uh, and I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I just need to like basically push myself backwards with my arms, you know? So I get in the taxi, we go home. And now I gotta climb two sets of stairs. Our building is not a very big building. It's like four floors. So I had to climb two sets of two flights of stairs. So that was also an adventure. And I, I was just going very slowly, very, very slowly. But I got up, I got into bed immediately because I was so exhausted. I immediately went to sleep for like three, four hours. Leg was very painful at that point. And I was even thinking like, maybe I fucked up to go home. But I slept, I woke up, I was better. Uh, do not give like too many details. Someone asked, how was it going uh, in bathroom? Uh, peeing was fine. Uh, luckily, I didn't need to go for number two until like day three because I wasn't eating food. I was just getting uh, infusions. Um, luckily I didn't need to go to the bathroom, but day three, when I needed to go for number two, I was like, when I realized I had to go, I was like, oh fuck, how am I going to go? Because I can't bend my knee. So what I did is I told Marenka to get me a chair 
So we put a chair in the bathroom and then she helped me lift my leg uh, on the chair so that my leg is straight like this, like it is right now. And then, yeah. And then after that, I had to, we had to push the chair, put the leg slowly down, but not fully because it can't bend. And then she had to grab me and then pull me up so my leg is straight. And I was like, holy fuck, that was an adventure. But yeah, other than that, I've been, um, you know, I haven't been streaming, obviously. I thought I was going to be fine streaming and apparently this kind of surgery is a lot easier. Uh, but because my meniscus was fucked a lot more, it's a lot more painful and the process is a bit longer. Yeah, basically my, my whole day is like bed and then I go on computer and then I put my leg on the chair. Initially I could barely move my foot, but you know, my flexibility slowly started coming back up. I started bending my knee a little bit and obviously it hurt sometimes, but you know, I had to start doing it and then on sat so the surgery was on Wednesday on Saturday I had to go get my bandages changed and they put lighter ones so now I can actually bend my knee way more I can almost do a normal like sitting position bending but it does hurt it I strain my leg so every once in a while you know when I'm sitting I, I put the leg like that just to get my leg going so yeah it's uh it's been an experience uh, like I said sleeping is very very annoying um, I don't really have an appetite as much. I'm taking a lot of medicine. Um, so I'm taking, uh, I have medicine for uh, like painkillers. I'm taking uh, antibiotics for five days. Then I'm taking probiotics. And I have, uh, you guys can't see them, but I have uh, injections here that I have to take for blood clotting. They're there, but you guys can see them. Uh, and basically, um, uh, because of the, the health insurance, my mom went to my doctor and asked to get uh, uh, basically a prescription for a nurse to come over and give me the injection. So yeah, I got 15 injections of, I don't know what's it called, oh, it's on F something, some anticoagulant. And uh, yeah, nurse comes every morning around 9.30 to 10 and I have to take it 15 days straight. So they just inject me. They were like, do you want it in stomach or thigh? And I was like, no. Can't you do it in an arm? Yeah, fraxi parent or parent. I don't know what's it called. And I was like, no, can't you do arm? They're like, yeah, we can do arm. And I was like, who asks for stomach injections? Hell no. Um, so yeah, that's happening. And uh, the injection is fine. It doesn't hurt. It stings after, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um... So yeah, basically what's been happening is I can't go to bed until like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. sometimes. Like yesterday I fell asleep at 5.30 because I, I, I'm i tired, but I can't sleep because I don't like sleeping on my back. So I was up till 5.30 last night, and then this morning they came at 9.30. I got the injection, and I forgot when I went to bed, right? So I got up, and I was like, oh, I feel fine. I'll just stay up. So I stayed up and around 11, I fell asleep in my chair. Like, you know when you're so tired that you just doze off. Like I cannot physically get up. And then I remembered, I was like, why the fuck am I so tired? And I remembered I haven't slept much at all. So I went back to bed and I slept three hours and I got up and um, I streamed. But yeah. So the whole, ex the whole thing has been experienced. Since yesterday, I can also walk without my crutches but not not all the time like if i get up now or when i wake up in the morning because my leg is rested i can walk without crutches for probably like 10 minutes you know slowly not normally but then after my leg will be in pain so then i have to use crutches so it's kind of like a process you know you you're fine and then you gotta use your leg and then you're in pain and yeah uh these are my crutches buggers you put your arm here I have an extender so I can beat people. I can turn on the light very easily, which is nice. I can, hold on, it's too long. I could beat you guys up as well from here. Um, oh yeah, and another thing is I did go to, um, so I could have gotten surgery um, at the, 
the the hospital because I have health insurance but I decided to go private because I was in a lot of pain and if I went through the the you know non-private hospital I would have to do a bunch of tests so they can confirm and before surgery I was in so much pain I was like I I, I can't I don't wanna and also the normal hospital would probably keep me there longer the visitation hours are very strict and if you go private it's a lot more loose basically Mareka and my my family could visit from like 10 a.m to they could stay till 7 p.m they even told Mareka like if she wants she can bring her laptop there and she can work or do whatever um she wants so that was nice and um the surgery cost me 2300 euros total so that includes like staying in the hospital, all the meds they gave me there, the surgery itself, visitations to redo the bandages, everything. And then, um, so then after the surgery, uh, like I said, my mom went to the normal hospital and she asked my doctor if I can get a prescription because she said he went to the private hospital, so I don't know if that matters, right? Because maybe they don't want to give the uh, injections because I went to a private hospital. And she just says, of course it doesn't matter. If he has health insurance, he can get the he can get the medicine. So I was supposed to pay for this like injection, like 12 euros per injection, and then I had to pay another like 20, 25 euros for a nurse per day, right? So I had to pay about 40 euros a day to get someone to come in here and inject me. But because of health insurance, it's it's all free. And yeah, they're sending a nurse every morning, so I'm getting injections and yeah, I mean, the only reason I paid is because I, I went private. And again, that's that's because of I just didn't want to wait any longer with my leg. It was in a fuck ton of pain. I should have probably gone last year, but, you know, I, with physical therapy, it was kind of fine and it wasn't. And then, yeah. Um, but if I went to a normal hospital, I, you know, that's for free. Or for free. I have health insurance. So those are trombone injections. Couldn't you give them to you yourself? No, I can't inject myself, dude. Uh, like if <laughs> so I don't mind getting injected but if I if I look at an injection going into my arm I will actually faint so I got injected in the hospital the whole time right and it was painful and it was this and it was that I'm fine if I look as the injection is going into my arm I faint immediately I don't mind blood oh at one point I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to mention this when they took off my bandages on the second day to see what the wound is looking like because they want to see for you know swelling and if there's infections or anything and it was all good but they're taking off the bandages and and i'm looking away you know because i don't know what the situation is i never had a surgery right i don't know what it looks like and the surgeon says she says you can look at the wound if you want and i was like okay so i look and i okay i'm gonna use this knee and as i look like there's a there's stitches here and as I look she's like pressing to see the swelling and she presses here and the blood just comes out <laughs> it was like a little squirt of blood uh, and then she you know she wiped it and you know, it wasn't like the wound wasn't bleeding it was just and I was like that was a perfect timing to look at it so yeah I'm fine with blood I'm fine with injections but for some reason looking at it or even thinking about an injection going into my vein makes me like very uncomfortable. Yeah, private hospitals are not free. So the way it works here, uh, but I don't know how it works in every country, but in, in Serbia, if you go to ER, even if you don't have, have health insurance, they will take you in. Um, if you have health insurance, you just give them your medical card and you get all treatment you want uh, for free or most of it. There's some medicine that you have to pay but you get a discount on it. And then if you go private hospital, you, in order to not pay, you would need to, um, you would need to have private health insurance. So there's a health insurance, which is for public, um, you know, everything, public health related. And if you get private health insurance, that does not cover the public hospitals, that only covers the private hospitals, I think. I think that's how it works. So yeah, I don't have private health insurance, but this is my, Ow. I don't know if you guys can see it. This is my leg right now. You can see there's hair and then there's shaved, and there's shaved. 
Uh, there's like two, three stitches. One here, one here, one here. And yeah. If you are going for a surgery, um, it's a weird experience. The recovery process, I would say, is way more uncomfortable than it is painful. That's the best way to put it. You just can't do stuff that you can normally do, which is annoying. Um, yesterday, I was more fr like I was more frustrated with the fact that I can't sit proper on my computer. Like only today, and and yesterday a bit, I can sit like this, but I can't sit normally. I can't lean back on my chair like I normally do, because I have to keep my leg a certain way. So that's the for me at least the worst part. And um, but I can see improvement every day, you know, like every time I wake up, I, I can feel less tension around my knee. I can bend it a bit more. I'm a bit more flexible. You know, it hurts less when I walk. Like this morning when I woke up, I went to get coffee and I did everything without crutches. But then I was like, okay, I, I need to use them now because now it's starting to kind of act up a little bit. So that's kind of, that's kind of it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know a lot of people are interested. Obviously I was going on Twitch for five, six days. And maybe it even helps someone if they have to do surgery, you know, just to know uh, what the process is. Which is, I'm assuming, you know, obviously I'm, I live in Serbia, you might live in another country, but the process is more, more or less going to be very, very similar. So hopefully once I am recovered, uh, I think they're taking off my bandage completely on Thursday. They're taking off my bandages completely, so it's just gonna be stitches, and I have stitching to be removed in about nine or 10 days. So that is it. <clears throat> if you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. I don't know if I'm gonna upload this on YouTube, actually, we'll see. But there's a little story for you guys. So I'm glad we caught up. I'm back on Twitch. We're gonna be streaming more. Back to somewhat regular schedule, maybe for the, not for the next five days. Uh, but I'll try to stream like every two days at least so that I slowly get back into it because yeah I played today I, I kind of play like shit, but you know, I'm not not at hundred uh, percent Regarding my body so that's it YouTube gamers thank you for watching twitch gamers Let's keep going